www.ipe.co.uk. Back to the Champions League pool here on Free Sports. Fantastic first match between Neil Raybone and John Rowe. Sees that Neil take the lead in the competition. Plenty still to come, of course, Simon, but that is just a tough opening match for Neil and to get himself top of the table. Please with it. Yeah, and it's going to be hard for John to take because he knows that he should have gone 3 2 ahead after Neil missed the opportunity himself. But great, great opening match. We've had three. Three finishes from the break in the match, a little bit of drama. Both players had their opportunities, very exciting opening match. But this is probably the next match is the moment that uh, a lot of people have been waiting for. The, the shootout king, Jordan Shepard, makes his entrance into the competition, which uh, I know I've been looking forward to as well as a lot of people. Yeah, and we saw him in the shootout showdown, but it looked like he'd never been away in, in one game, then struggled in the other. It, it can be the way in these short formats that you don't always see the very best consistently. It's just difficult to maintain. It is, and, and Jordan Shepard, he'll admit himself, he's a player that, that likes to play a lot of pool, likes to practice, likes, likes to play a lot of tournaments. If he's, He'll tell you that if he doesn't play every day or five times a week, then he's going to feel rusty. Well, you know, during... Uh, during COVID and the lockdowns, he hasn't played anywhere near as much because he's had no tournaments to play for. So um, I'm really looking to see how sharp is he going to be. Well, it is Jordan Shepard. Try that one again. Jordan Shepard, who won the lag. And he's away with the ball off his first break. Can be one of the best Q artists in the world to watch when he's on song, Jordan Shepard. Is that good? Red balls Already in you can just see the flavour of the sort of naked aggression which makes him so good to watch. Yeah, though he's been not been blessed with a, a great table to, to go out the first opportunity. Red right at the top of the table is a problem. A cluster of three that are a problem. He's developed one. He's on, on the one on the rail. If he gets that out of the way, then it's just the one at the top of the table that he needs to, to consider. Still odds against making the finish from here, though. No, that's not bad. I think the, the red at the top will go to the top left. And he's got a lovely little angle to, to land on it to the top left. He wants that to slow just a fraction. You can see the frustration in the walk, really, of Jordan Shepard that he's not landed on that red. It is a really quick, responsive table. and. It will roll that extra inch sometimes. What's he got? Out of the hat here. It will just be, I would say, safety. It's not particularly safe from Jordan Shepard. He's made one of his balls available. He just says to Brian Halker, over to you, mate. What can you do? It's a tough lie for Jordan there, and he was ultimately, he took quite fine margins, he was maybe an inch off making it. He was, but that's what happens when you've got a ball that's that far away from the rest of your work and you have to be very precise with your position play. That's where the, the high tariff shot comes in. He was close. But now that he hasn't landed on it, he's happy that it is where it is because it's blocking the yellow at the top of the table as well, which is going to cause Brian Halcro some problems. Brian Regard is the uh, outsider of the group tonight, which is a little bit unfair because he really is a, a fantastic player in his own right. Just speaks to the standard of the tournament tonight. It really is such a high standard. Yeah. Brian's a professional titles, world semi finalist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's uh, yeah, he's got some. He's got a very good pool CV, very good pool brain. Great effort but not the cannon he needed. 
and now he's in trouble. Yeah, big trouble. This is not easy to figure out with unlimited time, let alone 12 seconds and counting. Just going to leave a good white. That's not a bad one. I don't think Jordan Shepard's going to look to be too aggressive here, but what he needs to stop is leaving Brian Halcrow an angle on the yellow that's in the open to be able to develop the balls at the top of the table. And in, he also wants to get his red up towards that uh, top right because it gives him a ball to be able to either land on or develop his red at the top of the table. So he's done well there. This is now a really interesting frame, isn't it? I think Brian's thinking about cutting this back to the bottom corner, which is tough. And then playing the cannon. He is. And he's missed the pot. It wasn't a bad go, though. He was given half a chance there from, from Jordan. Ultimately, though, this is now the chance that Jordan was waiting for. There can be no mistakes from here. Nicely done from Jordan Shepard. And no mistakes with the first eight ball. He does get that first frame on the board. He needed a couple of opportunities to get the frame going, but he'll be happy that his tournament is now up and running. And Brian Halko had his chance, but wasn't able to get the cannon he needed. Uh, it's strange how Paul goes sometimes. If uh, Jordan had completed the finish, then the Brian would have been less uh, frustrated than he is. But that's the way the, the game goes at times. And Stephen Jameson has just popped out to interview Neil Raybone. So we can go over to him now. Yeah, with Neil. Congratulations on the opening win, mate. That was, uh, that was a tough match, wasn't it, for your opening one? Yeah, it was a tough match. Yeah, John, John's a great player. It's a tough group, really, so I knew I had to play well. And I was a bit lucky in the end, really, because if, if John gets a double at two each, I'd probably lose the match. But, yeah, I, pl I played quite well, so happy. Yeah, parachuted into this tournament late. You probably picked the hardest group that you could have possibly gone for in the end. Yeah. Is this the sort of challenge that you relish? Yeah, I, lo I love playing the best, you know, the best players in tournaments, and I love like challenging myself. And you know, I'm playing a format that I've never played before. Uh, obviously, playing the Premier League at 30 seconds, but it's a big difference with you know with the 20 second shot clock. So, yeah, I just obviously just try my best, really. I know this is a venue that you're really familiar with. What's it like seeing it? Very, very different to what I imagine you're quite used to. Yeah, it's different. I only probably live like five minutes away from the, from the club, and the uh, club have like sponsored sponsored me. And uh, you know, I, you know, it's probably been over a year since I've been here, to be honest. Uh, so it's a bit strange times, really. But it's, it's good to be competing again. In terms of shootout rules, obviously a new format for you. I know you might have watched it in the past. What have you made to playing it? Yeah, I like the rules. Uh, I, I, I do get caught out, to be honest, sometimes because I, I've not played the rules that much. Uh, like the second frame tonight, I, I tactically went to if it a bit wrong, and that's why I lost the frame. But uh, I do, I do like the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've enjoyed watching you so far. Two more games to go. Best of luck. That's great. Thank you. Back right to you, sir. Great to see Neil on our screens once again. It's been a long time since his 2019 Premier League victory. To a good start tonight, top of the table after the opening match. Another opportunity here for Jordan Shepard. Dry break from Brian, didn't quite catch him as cleanly as he wanted to. Tricky shot coming up now though for Jordan though, because the angle of the, the white is going very close to that eight ball and the red. So I had to screw on and off the side cushion. He's uh, negotiated that very well and now natural come round for the for the eight ball. As I'm joined once again in the commentary box by Stephen Jameson. Yeah, good to speak to Neil. Seems in high spirits, which you would be after a win like that. Wouldn't go as far to call it a robbery, but it's certainly one that he got away with at the end of it. And sometimes those wins just feel a little bit better than they might. Great start from Jordan Shepard, two zip to the Welsh Wizards. something you become very used to when you're watching a man that's been dubbed the shootout king. He sometimes can take frames away from you in absolutely no time at all. 
This is uh, his opponent tonight, though, Brian Halcrow. And from the North East, South Shields, massive Newcastle United fan. So he talks about his CV earlier. Terrific record, really. IPA World Doubles runner-up as well, which is that is as good as any world title, <laughs> the, the players that play in it, you know. It's a really tough competition to win. Big Marcus Rashford fan as well, which I think after the last year or so, I think, I think all of us are, are pretty much in that boat. Yeah, I'm pleased to see uh, Marcus Rashford getting a, a nod there. Uh, but looking at the odds there, seven to one, he is the uh, outsider. The bookies have seen him as the outsider of the group, which is um, hard to believe when you consider how good a player he is. But um, I guess uh, you know he's got to play well tonight, and he's up Very against it already. Three. Jordan Shepherd to break, leading two frames to nil. Time running. He's a lovely bloke, his Brian. Chatting to him a little bit earlier. And he's having a bit of a practice on the table. Looked in good form actually. He was out there practicing, but. It's one of those where I just get the feeling that if Brian's to take away a win tonight, which is absolutely possible, a lot of things do need to go right for him. And it's dry breaks like the one we had in the second frame just there will not help him. What he's got to do is, is take the opportunities when they come. Obviously, you're going to have to break well, but with uh, John Shepard not taking out that opening finish, it was important for Brian to find a way of winning that frame and he wasn't able to do so. He, he was unlucky, actually, because he played a cannon that he was... Any, any, he got the cannon he wanted, but any thicker, and he wins the frame, and it, it was just thin enough that it didn't happen, and he lost the frame in the end. That's a tough shot there. You see that aggression, which is really Jordan Shepard's hallmark, but just have a feeling he was chasing that one. And that's come out really nicely for Ryan. Great shot. No, he's take about taking his chances. If he's given one, that's when he really has to take them. Absolutely, he's got to let Jordan Shepard know that he's in this match and take this finish out and get a frame on the board. Plenty of time in the match. Plenty of things to happen yet. And these are all there for him. Just come around and have a look to see if the yellow next to the red goes in the centre pocket. That just would make things slightly easier in terms of the pattern he could take. But I don't think it does because he's tried to play on it to the same pocket as the ball he's just potted and he's he is on it but it's a fraction thinner than he wanted this isn't ideal pot's tricky but it's the positional side of this next shot that's a real problem so much so and it's the safety that's chosen by Brian Halcrow just seeing that other camera angle as well, it looked like that ball only half went to half a pocket, so you really want to be right behind it if that's the case. Bit of a shot to nothing from Jordan there. If it had gone in, he'd have been in business. Tried to play red off red. Which would have been some effort. But also did it, knowing he'd get a pretty reasonable white. This is not an easy shot by any means. And... A sort of similar shot from Brian, really. In the sense of, he makes the pot, happy days, away we go. If he doesn't, if Jordan in a tricky spot. Brian's missed that plant by so far, though. It makes me question whether he even went for it. And I'm sure he must have done, because it would be it's absolutely the right choice of shot, because if it goes in, great. If it doesn't go in, you've got Jordan from distance. So I think he just missed it by a, a distance. Oh, that's a canny shot. I'd love this just to sit over, and it has. Lovely. In fact, it would have been uh, fine if it had dropped in. One thing he didn't want it to do was just to sit on the cushion. He's in this match now, Brian Halcrow. This, this will go 2-1. And he's got the next break, too. On such moments, can match his hinge. Brian Halcrow is frame. trying to open it up the other way. 2-1. And Buzzer is on the board. That should set him down. He's into this match now. Got that first frame and he's still very much in the match. And he punished a mistake from Jordan as well, which adds to the, the good news for Brian. Well, here is tonight's favourite. We talked about Brian Halcrow being the long shot, really, at 7-1. Jordan is 5-4. 
Welsh with it, and when you see his achievements, you can see why five times shootout champion. And to win five shootout events is, we've talked about it numerous times before in the competitions that we had in 2020. It's such a freakish record to win the amount of competitions that he won in this format. It just makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, we saw them all on, on free sports as well. It, it really was uh, incredible to see the record that he had and the way that he achieved it. It's one thing to win a lot of titles, but in this form where it, it is so volatile and you are playing against such good players, it's so hard to be consistent, and he was. It was an, a, it's an incredible number of matches that he's played um, with the number of matches he's won. It, it really is incredible. And so much so now that it almost feels like he's he's built up a little bit of an aura around him in, in this format, which affects other players. And, you know, we talk about Paul being a very individual sport, and in reality, when a top player plays a top player, it can it can be so even. It just Red depends on the, the balls and lots of different small factors. You can just sort of assume that they don't really impact the other. But when you've got someone at the top of their game against someone who's in the middle of the pack maybe or a bit newer to the, to the format or the, or the game, that weighs on minds. I completely agree. And, and I, think he, I think even Jordan would admit when he was going through that great run in the shootouts and winning all those titles, he didn't play his best in, in every single match. He, there was a, he did build up an aura of, uh, you know, and, and some of the players he played against crumbled when they, they came up against him. They had opportunities to beat him and they didn't take it. And he got got away with one or two matches. And then, of course, once he's done that and he's into a tournament, you know, you give him a sniff in the in the sort of semi-finals or the final, and then he's going to run with it. And that's why he's walked away with, with five of the titles. You know, how many times did we see it in... Oh, Brian, that one needed to go, and he was in for 2-2. Two -two. He'd done such a good job of landing on that ball as well. He had to be so precise. But he'll be so annoyed to miss the pot. Just to go back to that point, so we, we saw over the Christmas period, anyone who was watching, you know, the World Darts Championships, how many, you know, there's top players who survived match darts to go out the tournament. And that, the pressure of knocking out a big seed if you're one of the rank outsiders, it definitely comes into play. And that's another example of a sport where actually your opponent doesn't need to affect you with what you're doing, but always happens. I can vouch from it from, from a playing perspective as well. I know that when I used to play, if I, I was fully aware when I was playing a, you know, a, a top player, a world champion, somebody with that aura, for whatever reason, and, you know, it's hard to tell yourself not to, you, you do feel differently out there, or you can feel differently out there. I know I did. John Shepard's first shot in this visit, he just knocked a ball onto the cushion there near the left centre pocket, and he wanted to knock it over. That is what Brian Halcrow is hanging his hopes on in this clearance here. I think Jordan's gone up for the, the double on that yellow and he's, he's gone way too far up the table. He's at least a fit foot further up the table than he was playing. And just catches the double a fraction thick. Brian Halcrow gets a reprieve from a frustrated Jordan Shepard. Did talk a little bit about this table being so uber responsive. I think of all the players tonight, I think Jordan took the, the least time to prepare on the table. He's a, he's a very get up and go sort of player, just relies on his natural touch and, and vision to see the game. I think on a couple of times it has caught him out. Brian's just tried to pinch the pocket there and he's got that all wrong. That's two great chances for Brian Halcrow to win this frame and that's going to really frustrate him. He may have got away with this one just a fraction. I'm not sure if the, the yellow that Jordan's nearest to Stanton goes to the top ball. right pocket. It looks very tight. Yeah. Extension called by Jordan. Give him a bit more time to line this one up. I think he's tried to play yellow off black into the top left there, which was ambitious. Yeah, that would be very ambitious. I'm not too sure what he was trying really. If he was, maybe he was trying to sneak that by to the top right corner. If not, I don't know. It's a strange one from from Jordan. 
He's got a decent cue ball. This frame, is, it feels huge, doesn't it? I, I know yeah, the scoreline really tells us it's huge. 3-1 or 2-2, two, two, but you know, with, well, we're now into the, the last five minutes. White ball <sighs> crept onto the jaw. Oh, he had his chance in this match, Brian Halcrow. He really did. And it might just be slipping away. Oh, Jordan. Oh, dear, oh, dear. He's caught that straight. Yeah, I think that's a sign of a, a player that's not been uh, playing as much. So I already said that he's a player that likes to put a time in a lot of practice, but he missed that by such a long way. Cued right across it. it is a surprise. I can't believe what I've just seen. I'm sure neither can Brian Halcrow. What a turn up. Well, we're all square. And this is now right up in the air. He knew as soon as he hit that. Shepard that he, he missed it. As soon as he contacted that white, he knew. He was up on the shot straight away. Yeah. You can see there, more missed pots. More, more balls made, mind. He's, he's gone after a lot more clearances. Often do see a fair few missed pots from Jordan, just in, by the nature of his aggressive play. But that was a, not by his standards, that is a shocker. It is, and Ryan's missed two. E easier balls in this frame and he's still got away with one winning the frame. Frame number five, Jordan Shepherd to break two frames all. Time running. A chance to take the frustration out on the break. It's not quite gone his way. He's made some balls here, Jordan Shepherd, but it's not a, the best of spreads actually, he didn't hit that one, it's all well. Yellow balls in play. Despite making, I think, three balls, two balls? Either way, he's going after them. Not to be. You could tell by the way the, the pack didn't open up. number of balls that just kind of moved a couple of inches. We've got a few of them going around the table. Actually, did manage to make a few, as you say, but didn't catch that anywhere near as cleanly as he wanted to. I was surprised by the, the misplant there at the start, as I was the the miss at the end of the previous frame. Yeah, it was a tougher shot, but again, it was a shot that you'd, you'd have backed him to make. Um, on maybe not even top form, on, on regular form. But this is... I don't to say this is a game that Brian needed it to be. He needed to be, it to be battly, and scrappy, and chip away. Two minutes 40 needs to get perfect position on these next three shots. And I don't think that's the first one. Okay, he's on this to the centre pocket, but he, I was thinking if he lands perfect, he can just drop it in and he doesn't have to move the red. And the same then would be on the black. This, now he has to move the red. That triangle will just open it. This is now difficult. This is a really thin cut. If he'd got the previous shot to straight or just beyond straight, then he could have just rolled them, rolled it through. Now he's working very hard. Well, the red's there, but so is the white. Well, time on it. And I think you just saw there with the little twitch that Brian Halcrow had. I think he knew that that was on. I think that was his realisation. He thought, oh, that's this close. But he looked at the shot clock. He thought, I haven't got the time here. I've got to go for it. Jordan drops his shoulders once again. He's come too far. Needed to be on the yellow nearest the pocket, and he's not. Having to play a plant. He gets this plant, but look at the position. Number 26. This visit is just getting away from him. This is now a frame. This is now a match deciding frame. It's unlikely. 
He's all okay, right. but he's not on the next ball, and the eight ball is over a pocket. This is so up in the air at this point. Jordan Shepard's going to have to pot his way out of a lot of trouble here. And he can't make it. And that may well cost him the match. Stab of frustration. Brian Halker doing the sensible thing here and taking as much time as he can on this shot. 38 seconds, 37 seconds left. 3 2, it's Brian's break next. Even breaks are going his way. He just needs to not make any cataclysmic errors and he's away. A yeah. black and a white off the break would uh, lose Brian the frame, and I think that's about the only way, realistically, he could not take the match hit. Even a player of Jordan Shepard's remarkable speed is going to struggle to clear, <laughs> clear a reverse dish in, in 38 seconds. One thing he needs to, to make sure, though, is with a four-point rule on the break, he needs to, you know, there, there's an argument to say if you, all you have to do is not foul break here, and you're going to, you know, don't put the black and the white, but if he doesn't hit this break with power, and he doesn't get his four points in need, so either four pots or a combination of four pots or four balls past the, the centre line, Four or more points. If he doesn't manage to do that, then he's going to give Jordan Shepard a free break to, to go for that break, uh, the golden break. So he has to hit this like a normal break, is what I'm getting at. He has. He's going to even make a ball as well. And then I'll just about do it with Brian Halcrow. Well, what a turn up this is. Conceded. Jordan Shepard has conceded. <laughs> that will do it. Brian Halcrow, big smile on the face of the man from the northeast. He is buzzing his buzzer. 3-2 win over the shootout king to kick off his night in the Champions League pool. A dream start for Brian Halcrow, who is threatening to really upset the party here in the group of death. That's a big surprise. Not the fact that Brian won it, but the fact that he won it from 2-0 behind. And uh, jo Jordan needed two chances to win the opening frame, but then comes up with a reverse dish in the next frame. He thought, OK, normal service here. Jordan's going to run away with this match. But Brian has scrapped, and he has hung in there, and he has waited. And in the end, Jordan's missed a lot of chances, and Brian walks away with the victory. What a result for Brian Halcrow. It's still all to play for in this group. Our third match of the night comes when we return. This program is brought to you by vinnie.co.uk.